This video tutorial will cover Katana's auto creation of subassembly feature. This is intended for any business that is using subassemblies in Katana. So in a nutshell, if you're not too familiar with what that means, it means that you're creating a product that has a top layer and inside of it, you're manufacturing products as well. Those have to be made in order to make the top layer. And these, for example, will have to be made as well. And they could also be made from other products too, which are also made from raw materials. So what happens in this case is that when your customer is buying a final assembly, it will drive commitments for product and materials all the way down to the lowest level. Now, when it comes to manufacturing those or creating the manufacturing orders that need to be created to make your top level, that can be very challenging prior to the release of this feature, meaning that what you would have to do is put in a top level for manufacturing and then go to your inventory screen, find the ones that were committed, make those, and on your way you go, it takes a lot of time, and then reorganize them to be in the correct order. Now, Katana automatically does that today, and it's very, very efficient and super helpful. So I'm gonna show you how it works, and we'll do this with an example so it's easier to digest. So in our example, I'm representing a manufacturer who makes jungle gyms or monkey bars. Uh, if you at one point were a kid and you went to the playground, you remember these big metal things that you would climb up and then go across. These are what we call jungle gyms and monkey bars. And to make them, not too difficult, they're basically made out of metal tubing. So our raw material is metal tubing, and then we would make two pieces by cutting the metal tubing into different lengths. So we'd have lengths like so, and then we'd take those lengths and then weld them together into shapes. So for example, like a square frame, which would be the vertical structure, and then the longer one, which would be called a ladder frame, which would be the horizontal structure in the final assembly. We'd make those two parts, and then those two parts would come together and make the final assembly, which would be welding those frames. So let's take a quick look at our recipe and I'll show you what it looks like. So starting here on the items list, what I have done is I've actually created the jungle gym here in a three meter and six meter length. And so these are my variations. And what I've done with the categories, I put a number one on it. Number one being the top layer. I've done this on purpose because if you've ever taken a look at the make screen, you'll see that we've included a category section here where you can use those different categories for filtering. So maybe if you wanna look up the different layers of subassemblies that are under manufacturing, you can use those filters, for example. Now inside of the recipe of the Jungle Gym, you can see that I've used two types of ingredients, which is the square frame and the ladder frame. And these two ingredients are, they themselves also products so let's take one of them as an example. Let's look at the square frame and it will also have a recipe or bill of material list which will contain cut tubes. This cut tube will then be made from the raw material which would be the tube steel. And you can see that these, what th these are what these look like um, and I'll open them as well. And you can also see that I put this as the third layer of the subassembly, which comes after the top layer. And then this consists of a variety of different variations, which are the lengths themselves. And in its product recipe, it has a raw material, which is the different diameter of tube steel of varying lengths that make, make up for it. And then of course, going down to its rawest form, then we have the material, the tube steel itself. So that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward, not a complicated product. Uh, so yeah, what I want to show you in this case is how does it look when, let's say, somebody buys a jungle gym, and what does that look like on our uh, manufacturing queue? Okay, so let's go ahead and head over to the sell screen, and then let's add a sales order with a customer who's buying one of the jungle gyms. Okay, looks good. So back in the cell screen, uh, going into the auto creation of subassembly manufacturing orders, if for example, you're doing a make to order workflow like we are for this guy, you can choose the make button and then select make to order. Now, when you do so, it's going to ask you a question if you want to make the manufacturing orders for all of the subassemblies. Now, the reason why it's here is because oftentimes you probably don't. 
And so you would choose no, and then all it would do in that case is just push the top layer subassembly, or sorry, top layer final assembly into the manufacturing queue. And then you can make your own decisions as you wish from that point forward. Um, but if you choose yes, then it's going to actually create all of the subassembly manufacturing orders no matter what. And in a lot of businesses, as it's most commonly done, uh, you might be keeping some of the subassemblies that you have in stock. So it wouldn't be necessary to make new subassembly manufacturing orders. One of the downsides to this feature, which you need to be aware of as functionality is concerned, is that Katana does not look at current in stock quantities or any differences of commitments whenever it is uh, creating these manufacturing orders for sub assemblies. It simply doesn't have that feature available. So, like for example, if you push this order into the manufacturing queue and it uses a sub assembly and it requires three of them and you have two in stock, it will not only make one it will actually make all three, even if you do have two available in stock. So you need to keep those types of things in mind when you're using this feature. It's best used for companies that have that don't have super comprehensive uh, sub-assembly um, build requirements, as it would be less confusing in those cases. However, going further into that, you can always read more details here. But before we do that, I wanna talk a little bit about the make screen and actually what happens to it. Now our product actually has three layers. So as you remember, we have the raw material layer, which isn't a sub-assembly, and then we have one, two, and then final layer. So basically we have three different types of uh, steps that we would have to look at. Now, one of the things that will happen when we push to, to the manufacturing queue is the build steps are going to be in the correct order. The most important thing here is that we're looking at a single queue manufacturing queue. So things might look a little bit weird at first, but what you need to know is that, remember, number three is the bottom layer. So you have to make the bottom layer first, which will be at the top of the list. Then you'll need to make your second layers, and then you'll need to make your first layer last. And that's how you would actually go through your entire uh, manufacturing queue when these are made. But the way that this information will be organized is you might have three, three, two, three, three, two. So this will actually look in the sense kind of strange because actually what it will be doing is it will be generating demand for the cut pipes as like the level three layer. And then you would have, let's say a square frame. And then you would have the cut pipes level three layer. And then you would have the ladder frame. And then last but not least, you'll have the final assembly manufacturing order. So you'll have a variety of different uh, groupings that are going to be in the manufacturing queue, which you'll have to be aware of when you're looking at how this transposes over into the make screen. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. We'll choose the make to order option and then select generate manufacturing orders for all sub assemblies. Now, once that is done, you're going to see that SO-5 will be the lowest ranked manufacturing order on the make queue because everything has to come before it prior to it being available and working. So as you can see like that, this is how it pulls over. Final assembly is the last one here. And then you can see that there is grouping. So there's like sub assembly three, sub assembly three, and then number two. So these two have to be made in, the, in order for that one to be made. And then these two have to be made in order for this one to be made. And then when number twos are completed, then the final assembly can be completed as well. So it will pull over in the correct order, but maybe you still want to reorganize it correctly how you see fit when it comes to being more logical for your workflow. You might decide that, okay, I don't want them to be grouped like this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, number two subassembly that has been put in the sixth position and bring it down here. So that way it's three, 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 two, two, and one. At the end of the day, the most important thing is that your top layer is last and that these guys here will also be second to last. And these ones will be made prior to the number twos are created and before the number one is completed. So that should just give you a nice little overview and workflow of how this feature and functionality is designed for in case you uh, are planning to use sub assemblies in Katana. As a general rule, uh, this is how we did it with the make to order workflow. It also works exactly the same if you went to the process 
of a make to stock workflow. So if you created a manufacturing order either from the inventory page, stock screen, or directly manually like so, you can do it in this manner as well. Create MOs for sub assemblies, and then hit create and close. And then that will be pushed to the manufacturing order list. And here in the make screen, you'll see that final assembly is listed last, and then you have three, three, two, one, and then it's in the correct order. Hope that you found this video informative and this tutorial valuable. Uh, if any questions come up, feel free to write to our support team.